Okay, I want to do a quick video on why I don't believe the Book of Enoch is an inspired writing. I originally intended to do a, a more lengthy video uh, showing the Book of Enoch and another writing called the uh, Prophecy of Zephaniah, uh, why I do not believe they are inspired writings at all. Uh, these books, I believe, are what's called pseudepigrapha, that they uh, claim authorship, but were not indeed written by the people they claim as having uh, written or dictated them. Uh, most historians trace the origin of these books to uh, the intertestamental period between the Old and New Testament. Uh, it seems during this time there was an explosion of uh, apocalyptic, uh, apocalyptica and... Uh, pseudepigrapha books, um, which were not part of the Bible canon and were rejected. Uh, I'm not sure why, but this period of time, it seemed like it was the end thing to, to write books that weren't part of the Bible canon. Because it seems, uh, the Jews rejected the Book of Enoch and other writings as not inspired, though some maintained they were good for uh, reading or, you know, edification, but they weren't accepted as scripture. Uh, but as far as the Book of Enoch goes, there's four categories of problems I find with it, um, and I'll list those off. One is it contradicts uh, the rest of scripture on certain points, and I'll go over that. Um, two, there's some etym etymological problems with the words. Uh, third point is, uh, if the Book of Enoch claims to, or certain people claim that it's, it should be in the canon, there are issues with um, the preservation of Scripture. Um, why God didn't preserve it better like the rest of the Bible. And the fourth problem is uh, problems in the writing style. <clears throat> okay, this video isn't meant by any means to be a very deep analysis of the Book of Enoch, but just rather a quick uh, overview of why I reject it. Um, so I'm not going to have a whole lot of points, but just a few to make you think, and uh, if you want to research it out, you can. But uh, that first point, that there's contradictions or absurd things in the content itself, uh, like I said, uh, it mentions that the giants that were brought forth from the uh, angels mating with humans were 200 feet tall. Um, <laughs> yeah, that seems pretty absurd. Um, also, uh, the women... The giants and the women that gave birth to were punished. Uh, the giants were turned into demon spirits and women into siren sirens, uh, which is, uh, I guess, a Greek mythological term about seducing female spirits. Um, nowhere else in scripture will you find humans being transformed into demons. Uh, nowhere at all, or the other way around. You, This is a foreign concept, which is more like uh, Greek mythology than Biblical theology. Uh, which uh, kind of goes to show that this book was most slightly written with people who uh, held a certain Greek mythology and philosophy rather than the Bible. Uh, the big thing for me is uh, <clears throat> it says that Enoch lived in the time of Noah and he told Noah's father and Noah was born that, uh, you know, to watch after his child, um, though in Genesis 5 it says Enoch was taken away by God a hundred years before Noah was born. Uh, so right there we have a major contradiction of scripture, uh, which is enough alone to reject this whole book. Okay, uh, next point is uh, problems with the uh, etymology of certain words and terms. Uh, it mentions certain locations like Mount Horeb and Sinai, which uh, have no 
historic mention in a you know historic records before um, I guess uh, the Old Testament or the books of the law. And if uh, you know the book of Enoch is a genuine book, it would be the oldest book in the whole Bible. So the problem with using words like Sinai or Horeb, and I think there's others, uh, but like I said, I haven't didn't go over this uh, quickly because I just want to make a quick video. I think it may have mentioned Jerusalem too or Israel, but these are all words which wouldn't come into existence, you know, far off, and uh, Enoch wouldn't have known of these words you know, back before the flood. It's kind of like, uh, basically, if the book mentioned the United States of America or something like that, <laughs> you know, such a term wouldn't even, uh, you know, wasn't a term until, you know, the 16 or 1700s. So it's absurd to uh, believe that this book was written, you know, in a time uh before these words were known. <clears throat> okay, my third point here. Um, it's a problem with the preservation of Scripture. Um, I'm not a strict... Uh, well, I'm not like uh, the King James Version only people, but I believe there is a certain amount of preservation of Scripture, definitely, that God uh, has placed on the Bible. And one of my beliefs is that uh, every book... Of the Bible that God wants preserved is preserved in its original language amongst uh, you know other languages too and uh, there are many manuscripts in the original languages you know to back up the books so we can uh, look at them and not get tangled up on translation disputes not everything in the Greek and Hebrew translate over into English so if we study the original languages we can get a sense of uh, the genuine uh, meaning of the words in the Greek or Hebrew. Plus, uh, you know, we have the uh, Septuagint, which was, you know, written in 300 BC by Jews, uh, translating the Old Testament into Greek, so we can see how people of that time translated uh, Hebrew terms into Greek, what they thought the best renditions were. So the Book of Enoch, there is only one complete manuscript, which is an Ethiopian, which uh, obviously wasn't the original language. Furthermore, it's most likely there's at least one or two translation layers uh, between the Ethiopian and the original language. It's not exactly certain which language it was written in, be it uh, uh, Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic, but it would have to be translated from that probably to... Uh, you know, Greek, or, and then into Latin, maybe, and then into Ethiopian. Right there, you have, uh, you know, one or two translations between the original and Ethiopian, and when you translate like that, you lose a lot of the original language sense, and it shows. If you uh, actually compare um, the verses um, in Jude to uh, the book of Enoch, translated from Ethiopian, even though it kind of appears they're the same. If you look at the words, they are different words, so I don't believe that counts as preservation at all. Now, uh, some people are going to object and say, well, you know, isn't the Book of Enoch and the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls? Well, uh, actually, it isn't. The only thing in the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls are five verses out of the Book of Enoch, which is, uh, I think, 60 chapters, and only five verses were shown in the Dead Sea Scroll, so uh, that's a pretty lame attempt to uh, explain, you know, preservation shown through the Dead Sea Scrolls. If you know five verses out of like uh, hundreds of you know verses would you know vindicate the absolute claim that I was inspired, that's just ridiculous. And uh, going back to Jude, the the part mentioned in Jude, um, I believe it's Jude. 114 to 15. Uh, in the King James Version, I counted 48 words in the passage that Jude accredited to Enoch. Uh, that's 48 words. And uh, people claim the book of Enoch, which is 60 chapters, and you know that's got to be uh, thousands of words. They think that 48 words vindicates the whole, you know, 
the whole book of the 60 chapters, and that's absolutely false. Uh, what I believe is, um, I'm not sure if Enoch was known by oral tradition or maybe a small writing, but uh, the passage that Jude cited is inspired, but I believe people took that and they added a bunch of writings around it and tried to pass it off the whole thing as the Book of Enoch. And I think uh, such a case can be supported when you look at the whole thing. Which uh, brings me to the fourth point here. Uh, problems in the writing style. It, if you read the Book of Enoch through, it seems pretty obvious. Uh, when you go through chapters, it lacks a, an agreement or a, you know, a single style. To me, it looks like it was a bunch of writings kind of compiled together. It really doesn't have a rhyme or rhythm to it. Uh, so I believe though there might be a small drop of what Enoch said in it, I think most of it is just a false teaching that tried to sneak its way in by claiming authorship by taking something Enoch said and made a bunch of you know, false writing around it. Now there's one point I want to bring up about, bring up about it as well as uh, I read this uh, when I originally intended to do a video about this, I uh, kind of went through the book quickly, and uh, at the end there's this one prophecy, and I was reading what historians, uh, commentators thought of it, and uh, it, they agreed that it um, started, uh, I think, from Genesis and went on to the period of the Maccabees. Um, which made me think, if you want to do a false prophecy, you can't really go beyond your own period. And since uh, historians trace this back to the intertestamental period uh, for a fake prophecy, it makes sense that it would end there. It also bothers me that, uh, that there is nothing in Old Testament prophecy about the intertestamental period, about the events... Uh, happening with the Maccabees and all that. Um, in Amos it was mentioned that there would be a period of silence uh, upon Israel and uh, people would look for a prophet and look to hear the word for God but it wouldn't be there. So the period itself was prophesized but events in it weren't. Yet the book of Enoch you know tries to uh, show prophecies of the Maccabees and such and uh, to me it looks like the authors you know live at the time so they can make a false prediction about it, but they couldn't go beyond it. They couldn't predict, uh, you know, events of the future, because, you know, they were men and they're faking prophecy. Uh, they did uh, finish the prophecy off with, you know, the Messiah coming back, but that was, you know, a common thing in the inspired scripture. They just kind of add it at the end, and, oh yes, and then the day of the Lord happens. But, you know, obviously this looks like a faked... Uh, false uh, book to me.